guys, VBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Well, guys, we're going to do a twofer here. We're going to do an SP220 and an SP221. So this is our SP221. And out of a 9, out of a 10, or 10 uh, out on a 10 scale, this thing is in about a 7 shape. It's missing the interior plate. And um, it's in pretty interesting condition. There's quite a bit of dust and dirt and cigarette residue on it. But that's okay. That's why it's here. It's here to get cleaned up and put back to its most pristine condition that we can get it into and get it running again. So, I just thought I'd pop the lid and take a quick look on the inside. The outside tin's in really, really good shape. I gotta close that real quick because it's got all my customer's information on it. This thing was obviously in a smoking environment, which means we're gonna spend a lot of time with cleaners seeing if we can get the cigarette smoke to come off this thing, the stain means I'll have to take the knobs off and clean them and we're going to have to clean around the meter face and we'll see what comes off of this thing. So let me go ahead and get started. This is our little before. Now let's get it cleaned up and as I take the tin off and stuff we're going to take a look at the inside and see what we got going on for guts. So just give me a minute we're going to take the armor off. Well um, so we slid the amp out of the out of the armor and uh, we've got an incredibly thick cigarette stain on the inside. It's okay. Not a big deal. But this thing has come apart a couple times. Um, the bleeder circuit is just about cooked off on this board. It's okay, it's still intact. So we'll go along, we'll reinforce these traces. Like this one here's got a little break in it. So we'll go along, we'll, we'll flow some more solder in there. This fan is woefully inadequate, like a joke inadequate. So what I think I'll do is I'll see if I can figure out a way to strap a different 110 fan on the lid and we'll delete this fan completely but uh, just a lot of cleaning that's going to be involved with this a lot of cleaning back end of this thing doesn't look too bad the chokes are pretty laid down in dirt but I think that'll all clean up as well got still full function in the band selector now you can tell the way this thing was stored look at the shaft right here so you've got your front band selector, which is actually your output band selector. And then it rotates around and it runs a, another cog in the back that switches between the band selector. But look, I think this, this poor girl was stored outside. So this might not be cigarette smoke. This might be something else, but let's see if we can get this aluminum to brighten up. Let's put some cleaners on this. We'll use this here as our litmus test, this little side of the cabinet. So give me just a second. So, we just cleaned this little patch of the cabinet. You're not going to believe what I used. Good old ether. Starting fluid. So now we're going to try and clean this section of the cabinet and see if we can get this to brighten up any. But, after, pre. So let's clean up this little section and see if we can get it to come up any cleaner here. Hold on. So, we did from here to here with ultra premium glass cleaner. I love this stuff. It'll you literally sit there and watch the nicotine bubble up out of the aluminum. Now I got one more stuff, one more thing. Now if I was to have this can in California, they'd take me out behind a barn like old Yeller and shoot me in the head because uh, just to release this into the atmosphere in California would, well, there'd be people rioting in front of my house and you know, There'd be dudes showing up and putting a tent around my house and stuff. It's this, well, it's made by Sunrise Environmental Scientific. It's a very, very aggressive cleaner. It'll actually take the anodization off of aluminum. So let's spray a little bit on here. Yeah, 
I'll let this soak in and we'll see what happens. I shall return. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so this is acetone cleaned and then uncleaned. And so to give you another example, I did cleaned and uncleaned. Now I did this half of the back of the unit. And I don't know how well the lighting is going to show up, but everything from here down has got a nice orange patina to it. But where it's really going to show up is over here. Cleaned, uncleaned. Now this isn't all that important. These little outer bits, this is a cosmetic thing. It has nothing to do with the amplifier actually working or being functional. Except when we get cigarette residue build up back here and cigarette residue build up on this switch and on this switch and then residue in between the fins and I'm gonna play hell getting these fins all cleaned out again it's not a big deal we'll pull this fan off and get it cleaned out and then we'll get the whole inner interior of this thing cleaned out but I wanted to show you that just with a little bit of elbow grease you can go and have clean unclean and I got to do the same thing with the faceplate because, well, it's a presentation. We got to get it cleaned up. So, pretty clear. So, you guys that smoke you around your equipment, stop. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So, let me do my cleaning bit. We'll get this thing all polished up and looking like a pretty penny again. And uh, then I'm going to go over it with a fine tooth comb. Like I'm already seeing little details like this right here tells me that this thing has been driven hard in its life. But just because that resistor is discolored down here does not necessarily mean the resistor is bad. Okay, this is part of the metering circuit. So we get this cleaned up. We're going to get this whole back into the cabinet all polished up and cleaned up. And then we'll get the RF deck all cleaned up. And then we're going to actually run it. We're not going to get too carried away with the cleaning bit yet. But we're going to get it loaded up. We're going to see if it builds high power, high voltage. And then we'll see what the, uh, the capacitors that are in here, which are obviously recaps, because the stock ones have paper caps like this, this long in them. Get all this cleaned up, make sure that doesn't flash over. We're going to get the inside of this all cleaned up, make sure it's not able to flash or arc over. And um, when I come back, this will be somewhat clean. We'll have some 572Bs in there, and we'll have a Variac hooked up. We'll see what happens. So give me a minute, I shall return. Look at that, boys and girls. They're silver, not gold. What? No. Yeah. Hmm. careful over here because the traces are really heat affected but I don't know how well this is coming out but it's like miracle jizz check it out the metal of the cabinet all the orange crusticle floating in it look at that look at how clean it clean those traces up took all that cigarette schmoo off of everything Cleaned, uncleaned. Cleaned, uncleaned. See the difference? You guys aren't going to believe how well this turned out. <laughs> Read the meter now, too. Check it out. This thing's pretty wet, but uh, you can now read what all the components are. Aluminum's all cleaned up. <clears throat> High voltage supply to breakers, 
inside the RF deck. All cleaned up for the most part. I gotta let this dry overnight now. Let this air out. Because I dare not put any high voltage on this thing yet. Look at the back side of this thing. It had three miles of crud in it. All the capacitors are cleaned up. Cabinets all cleaned up. Transformers all cleaned up in the band switches are all nice and clean. Plate chokes all nice and cleaned up. The blockers nice and cleaned up. The parasitics, I thought these were burned. They're actually in really good shape. <clears throat> I'll probably leave these stock. Two front band switches cleaned up pretty good. So, and then our capacitors, here and here, they cleaned up really good too. So, yeah, we'll let this dry overnight and we'll see how this uh, turns on and loads out tomorrow. Got all the brown schmoo off the back of the cabinet. So before I go up in the house, I'm going to clean the tin up real good and get that ready to go as well. On that note, see you guys tomorrow. So I think where I left off is I was cleaning. Pretty sure. Well, we're not cleaning anymore. We're actually running it. So I dug around. I got a couple... Um, uh, 572Bs. Sorry, I took a minute to get that out of my head. I got the little fan reinstalled. And then I had to build, because this one doesn't have the 10 meter position on it. You can see it's 20, 40, um, pardon me, 80, 40, 20, and 15. We had to do some tricky stuff here on the back side. Um, that little box is a booger to work around. But, got her done. That's all I'm going to say about that little box. Needless to say, we're going to grab up our striker mic, 955, 5 watt slug between the 955 and of course the SP221, SP201. About 80 watts of drive. 600 watts output, nice and clean and smooth. Of course, if I drove it a little bit harder, we get a whole lot more power out of it. Now listen, I want to show you something. And look, when you go to adjust this, the smallest, look, look at how far I'm going to move this knob. Ready? I bet you didn't even see the knob turn, did you? Look at how this affects our output. We're just doing 600, right? Now we're doing 400 again. So just in case you missed it, let me adjust it back. Ready? Yeah, that much movement dictates 200 watts differential in output. So you're going to have to be very sensitive with this. Now listen, you told me that you have another faceplate that's like mint. Well, I got another one laying around here too, but you said you wanted to change your own. So, everything on here works. Your relative power, the SWR, the plate, the grid, everything. The relative meter, everything on here now works. Which was no small feat. Had a bunch of stuff back here I had to change to make that work. <laughs> and quite a little bit of stuff underneath the bottom. Now this does have a soft key in it. So you take a modern radio on it and key the amplifier. So I'm not going to worry about the face anymore. But be very careful when you take this apart, especially with the meter. The meter's on its last, last legs. But then again, Mr. Mr. R, some of the projects I've seen you doing on Facebook here lately, gives me whole confidence, whole confidence that you're going to be able to do that. No problem. I mean, you've done some amazing stuff. And I want you to look at the input tune. It does not get any flatter than this. Look at this. Okay. 
Do. You're gonna make a sinner out of me, right? Amplifier. Hello, 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 hello. Hold on. And I just had this so flat that I don't. Couldn't slide a piece of paper underneath that needle. Hello. Striker, the infamously impossibly hard to get the meter to read right on the front of the striker. One bar. This thing is running as best as it's ever run, especially on the frequency that we're operating it on, since it never would have run there before. Just saying that too. So four tank coils later, I had to go in there and emulate load, and it's been a fun afternoon. Spent a couple hours on this, just kind of getting this thing running. But it is straight. I mean, everything on here is clean and where it needs to be and operating perfectly. Talk through it perfectly, hear through it perfectly, and it's going to run perfectly for you. So now this is the end of part one. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this amplifier aside. Now I've got to go get the other amplifier because he's going to use this as a driver. As a driver. I want to show you something. Let's take my very anemic 2950 and run it with this. Now, from what I understand, he's got himself a little President Washington or something base station. So, 2950. So, 1000 watt scale. 300 peak watts. It's perfect for what we're going to use it for. 25, 30 watt radio, and this will run perfectly for what you're going to use it for. And have literally unlimited key down time because the thing's barely even going to be awake. Just give me a minute. Well, actually, tune in for part two. This is part one. So part two's coming up, you guys. Invenerable, SB201. Part one. I shall return. Check it in on the next video.